Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, this is our coffee chats that we do kind of bi-weekly on each other's channel. If you're new to the channel, this is my friend, my good friend, Catherine Edwards, over across the pond in the UK. How are you doing today, Catherine? I'm doing really, really well, but I've got a full office here at the moment because the heavens have just opened. So if you hear some very noisy cats, Coco's joining in on the conversation, but doing great. And I think this is a really important subject. I think, you know, that we're going to have lots of discussion on this one. Well, I love it. That's it's Coco because Co that's a female cat, right? Yeah. So she has a say too, because we, and I'm, even though our coffee chats are usually pretty casual discussions about certain themes in life. I messaged you, Catherine, or I, t I don't know when I actually talked to you about this series, and we're going to actually be doing kind of like multiple videos on this, you guys, because there is a series on Netflix now called American Sweethearts, and I have watched this series now like three times, and it was beautifully made, um, but the series is about the um, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, um, and so for those, cheerleading is a very, I would say, American sport, isn't it, Catherine? Yeah. So this yeah, is very. very, and cheerleading, I've, I've also watched the the cheer uh, on Netflix where they where they talk about college level. And, and, you know, cheerleading itself from the time I was a kid, even till now, has evolved so much. You know, it started off as this, you know... Hi, you know, girls on the high school field just re leading the, the, the crowd in cheers at an American football game. And now it's a freaking sport. Now there mm -hmm. are literal cheerleading teams that aren't even associated with American football teams. They just compete. And it's dance, gymnastics. I mean, these, you know, if you watch the cheer documentary, you see girls falling off of, you know, stunting, breaking their arms. It's a very brutal, intense, and your level of respect for these athletes goes through the roof. But the American, I'm just going to show the website quickly for you guys who are not from the United States. The This is the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders website. The Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders are probably the most famous NFL cheerleaders in the United States. The NFL is like the National Football League. We also have collegiate level, which is like universities. And so these are like professional athletes. And this, th the standard of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders is through the roof as to who makes the squad. And so this docu-series here, this is the advertisement for it, American Sweethearts, um, goes kind of through one season. It starts with the auditions, and it goes through a season, and you follow some of the girls in their daily lives. You learn their backstories. You get to know the coach pretty well. But it's caused quite a stir in the United States. And this is something I, I kind of want to kick this off, because, again, we're going to be doing multiple episodes on this, with just having a a conversation first and foremost about women in sports. I know this is something dear to your heart as well, Catherine. And as you said before we started filming, I think you summed it up perfectly. We've come so far, but yet we haven't at the same time. And there's something about the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, which as you know, people like us, Catherine, who aren't necessarily woke people, um, I noticed at watching it how this is a very feminine like, this is a feminine sport. The hair, the makeup. This is a very, very feminine sport that's only for women. Men cannot do this. Whether you identify as a woman or not, you have to biologically be a woman to do this particular sport. And so, did that, I mean, just, I know you haven't watched the series yet, Catherine, but that really struck me as kind of unique at this time period where there's so many blurred lines now. Yeah, 
I mean, I wouldn't say it's sort of unique in terms of I think the cheerleading is very every sport has its own sort of real lane that it goes in. And one of cheerleading is probably out of all the sports I've seen where the lines are blurred more between being a sport and a beauty pageant sort yeah. of thing. So undeniably, they're you know their athletic performance and their skill level is amazing and their dedication and their fitness and their strength and their suppleness so absolutely it falls into a sport like that but I can't think of any other sport where looks are so fundamental now I am going to come back to this because I still think there's a huge discrepancy between when you're hearing people discuss sports stars from all sorts of different sports the way that they'll talk about women in sports compared to men I think is quite honestly just shows how Neanderthal we still all are but this this cheerleading is very unique in terms of that it's the hot half just as important the look side of things as the performance side of things and I don't I can't think of any other sport Mm. that that's the case for and you will see uh, we were talking you know just you guys know like they'll have thousands of people audition each year to be a part of the um Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders but there's only 36 spots yeah and so they become there's a lot of, and you know, I'm kind of paraphrasing what a lot of the people talk about in this doc. It's a docu series. It's multiple episodes where they they talk about, you know, you could have a girl who is beautifully trained, like a dancer. They're all dancers. Very the, the opening episode shows them doing their their solos for auditioning in their their dance costumes, and the it gives me chill bumps. I'm getting chill bumps thinking about just the way that they can like in the muscles they have in their body and the way they can express the dance and. And, you know, they're like, you can have this girl that's perfectly, beautifully trained, everything, but you get her on the field, you screen test her, because these girls are, they're NFL cheerleaders, they're broadcasted to millions of people, and mm. she fades. And then that person's cut. They're cut because they fade on the field, you know? And, and so, and, and they talk about the looks. They talk about, in episodes, measuring the torso with the with the actual, because the, the uniform, for those who don't know, I know you, a lot of uniforms do go through evolutions, but the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleader uniform is very specific. And it's been the same uniform since, like, I think, like, the 70s. You know, obviously, it's it, it's not, they're not wearing the same uniforms the girl in the 70s wore, but, but it's the same, it's very iconic. And so they will measure, in one episode, they're measuring the belly button ratio to the shorts, you know? And so, so there is absolutely, when they go to practices... They have to be on in full makeup with their hit with a blowout because part of it, they don't pull their hair back. That part of it is swinging the hair and in their practices, they have to be fully made up. And so absolutely, there's an element of of that beauty pageant, the Southern, you know, big hair is very Texan, the Southern big hair. Um, and so, and that's what they're selling. They're selling the Dallas Cowboy. They're the they're they're the franchise. And so, you're absolutely right, Catherine. And a lot of people took offense to that, you know. But I think about that with Broadway, though. You look at Broadway dancers, which a lot of these girls will go on after they're done with after they retire to dance to be a part of the Rockettes. Broadway also looks at people's looks and the way they look on stage. Yes and, yes and no, not in the same way. So I've got some family members that are very top dancers as well and have been on top sort of um, the equivalent, you know, the uh, Broadway type ones in in London West End. And it's not done on beauty. So it's done on physique. Yeah. But not beauty. Um, and there's a big difference, I think. And this is where I think, you know, first and foremost, my view from what I've seen, I haven't seen the whole series, but I've watched some clips. And I think, you know, first and foremost, um, the girls are choosing to do this. They're very feminine, very beautiful. It's both points are just as important to them. So therefore, the, everyone chooses their own sport and is drawn to it for different reasons. And that's part of their personality, which is why they're drawn to it, the beauty side of things, the the girly side of things, so to speak. So you're not going to get someone being drawn to be a cheerleader if they're also interested in probably rugby. Right. Um, you know, so it's a very different physique. You know, you've only got to look at the physique of a 100-metre sprinter and a steeplechase runner. They're complete, or a marathon runner, completely different physiques. But I think... It's very interesting to see how society, I think this is where it gets really nuanced, where 
when you're putting yourself out to be judged on looks and you will be judged on looks so if you're an athlete like i know athlete in a lot of terms is used for any sports person but in the uk we tend to use an athlete for athletics you know track and field events and then you'd have a football player or soccer player or a rugby player or a rower or a, a, you know you name it horse rider and I think this is the thing, is that when you're looking into these, regardless of what the sports are, again, there isn't an equivalent that I'm aware of of a men's sport where the men are being judged on their looks as well as their skill level. Yeah. Um, but the women are choosing to do that, and that is embracing the femininity and that beauty side of it. But equally, it's also setting horrendously unrealistic standards to most people. And from the, I've seen quite a few review shows of it, and you know, without a doubt, there's a lot of mental health issues going on there because of it. Because when you put yourself up to be judged on your physical attributes as well, it's really tough. Yeah, you're so in that. that I love it because they are too. They know for women who want to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, they know what they're signing up for. They yes. know they're going to be judged on their body. They know they're going to be told to lose weight if they if they're a little bloated. They're they know it, they take the rookies and after the rookies come on and they give them a complete makeover. They they the the Dallas Cowboy franchise takes control of their hair color of everything. I mean, they pay for it for them. So you're kind of agreeing to that. That's part yeah. of the, 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 the sport is the look is the appeal, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and so with that being said, yeah, I know it got a lot of kickback, a lot of pushback, but that's the thing is that these girls are aware that this yeah. is, and they get, they do in the series, they do cover the mental health aspect of a lot of these girls and they talk about it. And, you know, two of my favorites were Kelsey and Victoria. And these are two veteran, like girls who've been doing it for a very long time. They're friends, but they have two very different relationships with their own body through the stress. So it's yeah. very interesting to see how different people take it in. And I'm not going to give any spoils away, but one of the cheerleaders who does struggle with mental health and disordered eating because of this does decide at the end to retire early because she yes. decides to put her and that more power to her because the sport isn't going to change. That's the sport. Yes. You have to either learn how to adapt and learn how to process the, the criticism in a healthy way, like Kelsey did, or mm -hmm. you would say, I can't, this isn't good for me. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to step away from, from the actual sport. And I think that's what people are missing. I was telling you, Catherine, that, We've gotten to this place in our society. There, there's a trail that my boyfriend and I do a lot, and it goes down to a river. It's like the, where they film Deliverance, and it's a very steep hill down. So coming back up is tough. Like it's tough for us too. Like we're drenched in sweat when we get up. But we were reading reviews of the trail, and somebody like review. One of the reviews was, "How dare this trail be so hard?" And I, and my boyfriend and I kind of laugh. Like I think you have to shape yourself up to fit nature and it's not the i don't think they can come and like make it easier like like i don't, exactly. I don't know. put a stair lift up there for right? you you're in the middle of nature you can't even get cell phone service out there you gotta you gotta toughen your so i think that's kind of in, in respect the same thing it's like this is what this franchise is this is what it's been and either you're tough enough to take it or you're not and a lot of the girls are tough enough and they do they do take yeah. it and I think a lot of that too, you, you kind of look at their family lives too. And it does seem that the girls that can take it pretty well do tend to have more stable family lives. Like they have a lot of support systems behind them. So they feel probably validated internally from their own experiences in life versus the ones who maybe don't have that great of a support system behind them. So it's very, as far as psychology is concerned, it's very interesting just to kind of see these girls perception now another thing Catherine is that most of these girls are in their early 20s and they can only yes. do it for five years after five years they have to retire and we were kind of talking about this off camera a little bit it's interesting to me because we look at the female body and what the female body goes through from the age 20 to let's say 40 you know when you're in your early 20s some of these girls even though they look like women they still kind of have a childlike mm -hmm body like they haven't fully their hips haven't fully you know so you, yeah. you have that standard as well obviously these the the position these girls are in they cannot be mothers at this time and we'll yeah. talk a little bit more about their schedule um and why that would be an, an impossibility but also having a child i don't know 
you know, when you get your uniform, that's it. They custom make your uniform to you. So for five years, that has to fit you. If you have a child, you you might get back down to your weight, but your hips have have kind of moved a little bit. And so it might not fit the same. And so, you know, what are your thoughts on that with Catherine, with like how a woman's body changes in sports compared to like a man's body and, and the different um, obstacles we run into as women versus men just because of our biology? Yeah, I think I'd like to take it back a bit and just sort of say, look, when we're talking about women in sports in general, there's so much uproar at the moment about men moving into women's sports, what you identify with and everything. But I find it so hypocritical because people can be outraged at that woke community, but still not accept that if you've got women's sports, we do have menstrual cycles. You do, your body is meant to change during that month. So for example, if you take soccer players, professional soccer players will have their body mass in, in you know, index and and their fat levels and they have to be, within a certain amount so that's my dog scratching Lola. but women you you will carry more body fat and it will fluctuate much more than a man's will naturally over the course of a month and that's completely normal and in fact it's a trouble if it doesn't yeah. you know it's not normal to not and what i find so interesting is with the women in sports, again, anyone going in sports, you've got to be incredibly dedicated. So my daughter's a professional athlete, and I do, honestly do not think most people understand the dedication that it takes on a physical level, on an emotional level, a psychological level, on every aspect of your life. And most people do it because it's a real passion. And every sport has its challenges for the woman's body and the men's body. But what I find so ridiculous is that these challenges are not taken into a part, into account. So, for example, I heard on one of the interviews, and this might be too much information for any male listeners watching, but it's an important point to that, you know, short, small, white, little shorts and everything. Well, how are you meant to cope with that when you're going through a menstrual cycle? Now, there's just been a big kickback in the UK for England footballers, because can you, rem can you imagine... First and foremost, let's take soccer players in the UK. Most soccer players in the UK have to wear men's football kit and men's boots. And I'm going to come on to this because this is really important. So you imagine a woman's physique is completely different to a man in general. Of course, we've got every size and shape. But, you know, our whole hip structure and everything and body structure and boobs and everything is different. So you imagine putting any other sport you know you imagine a fidget figure skater making the women going out in the men's um outfit or the men going out in the women's and yet in soccer this is still expect it, it, this is still very common in all but the very highest levels women's football boots you know women have been playing soccer for a century and yet only in 2021 did they bring out the first pair of women's soccer boots i mean can you believe it so I'm using examples like that I'm aware of, but I think the thing is, when you're looking, whether you're looking at the cheerleaders or whether you're looking at this, there's some various things that actually should be changed just for common decency and to avoid a lot of unnecessary stress. And I think when it comes to women having children, obviously that's a choice. If you go into something like any top sport, then you are going to be sacrificing um when you have children often because your body won't be able to because so many push their bodies so hard they don't menstruate properly anymore but obviously if you're pursuing a top level sport you're not likely to take a break and have a child some people do but it's the exception rather than the rule so i think so long as the woman is choosing but i think there's so many discrepancies because that I haven't got a problem with because a woman's choosing it. Lots of people go into a business career and if they want to get up the ladder then, they equally have to be very selective about when they can and can't have children because it will affect their career pro progression. Um, and quite rightly so in some respects. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's for a different show. I'm not saying that's not right and it shouldn't affect it. Um, but I think the discrepancy still between women in sport is and the way people are treated and objectified in all sports, you know, you would never get away with doing to men what you expect women to. And then people complain that they're not at the same standard. And it's like, well, they've had every obstacle put in their way. 
Hey, you guys, just taking a brief moment here to tell you about one of our sponsors, Miramate. Miramate is a sister company to Spooky2. A lot of you guys know our other sponsor, Spooky2, which is a Rife machine. But what's so great about Miramate is, A, it's not as complicated as, as the Spooky2 Rife machine. It's literally base is just a mat that you lie on when you're sleeping, and it helps bring energy and heal the body while you're already in a state of relaxation. And I think this is so important, especially since we're in a conversation right now talking about sports, especially women in sports. And of course, we've got men who are in sports watching. And of course, like me, many of you guys, we're not in sports, but we're pretty athletic. A lot of you guys like myself have a daily workout routine, whether that's a run, yoga, hiking, kickboxing, whatever that might be, you're using your body every single day as you should be. You're feeding your body, you're feeding your body with strength and fresh blood and fresh oxygen as you repeatedly break your muscles down to rebuild them stronger and healthier. And we all know that sometimes the recovery process from an intense workout can be um, can be well intense. And so things like Spooky2 and Miramate, along with our other sponsor, ASEA, really help the body recalibrate. They also help on a very energetic level, which I know for a lot of people, that's a controversial topic. But for a lot of us, myself included, I do believe that a lot of our, our issues and our body are in fact psychosomatic, meaning that they're created from our own stresses. And so the way that this this mirror mate mat works is again you lie on it and it sends the vibrational energy into your body to help correct whatever is out of whack, some things that you might not even be aware of. Now, we, Mir Miramate also has another product that basically you can hook onto your clothes. So if you're going on a long a hike or if you're going on a long run, you can hook up this little contraption to your pants just to help your body stay calibrated while you are in the heat of the moment with your body. I tell my yoga classes this all the time and my dance classes this all the time that when we are when we are in the exercise, when we are in the workout, when we're in the practice or the dance, that's not where the healing is happening. In fact, when you're in the workout, that's when your body is being burnt out. Your muscles are being burnt out. They're being ripped apart. That's when there is kind of a controlled demolition. It's after the workout is done. It's after the practice is done. The healing actually starts to happen. When the blood rushes into your body to start build your, building your muscles back stronger, healthier that's also you know when we're, when we're doing exercises for a spiritual practice that's when, when we're in especially in like more of an anaerobic work where the body is using glucose instead of oxygen to create energy the, the body is able to drop deeper within the tissue and the fascia and energetically that can pull up certain emotions that are being held the body and so after the practice is over that's when the healing for that happens too and sometimes that healing takes a while and so things like mira mate or spooky to right machine or asia can assist you in the process of really just being human and using your body in a way that brings life and creativity back into your world and so if you're interested in any of these products for spooky Two as well as for mira mate you can use my name bryce watson b-r-i-c-e W-A-T-S-O-N at checkout for any of your purchases for 5% off. Again, both of those websites are down in the description box below. So you can take a gander at all the products, both Spooky2 and Mira Mate have to offer. If you need assistance with the products, both these companies have incredible customer support. You guys know Brad's been on my channel a few times to talk about these products and he's always available to help you if you need help understanding how to work the product so do not be afraid to reach out to the companies and they will absolutely help you find the product that's best for you so once again if you're interested in any of these purchases you enter my name bryce watson at checkout for five percent off all right let's get back into the discussion Oh, I absolutely agree. And even in the yoga world, I mean, a lot of women in, in the traditional yoga world going back and forth to India, putting our legs behind our head, learning back handsprings of catching our ankles. And this is a lot of work on your body. And even in something that's like not a sport, but a practice, a lot of women like myself who are authorized, they don't have children until their late 30s, early 40s, because 
they're working so hard to get that authorization to attain that, that they have to, you know, you have yeah. to be able to, to do kind of perform to do all these sequences, these series to a high level of understanding so that you can teach it. And mm. so to pull back, to have a child, you know, it does happen, but most of them wait until they're done with that process. So they can, so they can actually let their body rest for a minute to actually give birth you know mm -hmm. and and it's I, I i think it's so important too Catherine. when we look at I, i'm actually just shocked that the soccer shoes are not have not been for women because even in this in this episode guys they yeah. show because they wear the cowboy boots the girls get fitted specifically the shoes get for their foot yeah for the foot shape them. is different. The balance yeah. is different. Because our hips and knees are allowing differently, everything's different. And I think when it comes to babies, it's the mm -hmm. women's choice. I don't think you can moan about, um, I really don't think you can moan about, you know, if you choose to make sacrifices for any profession, so long as it's a choice from you and you're not a pushy parent or an, in an abusive relationship if it's a choice for you that's a choice you make and you make your bed and you lie in it so to speak yeah absolutely you know? um but with the some of the other things i mean let's come on to the pay of these cheerleaders that's what I was, I was huge, huge issues so i know in a lot of female sports the difference between the same age for men and the same age for females so that there's no comparison in the pay and the everyone will always come back and I'm not again not saying it's wrong about the commercial aspect when more people watch the men's sport and therefore it's different but the whole point is is you can't raise the standards of the women's sport if they're doing a full-time job and then they're having to train late at night. So they're not eating, they're not sleeping, they're not resting, they're stressed from a full-time job. They do not get, they, they even in, say again, I'm going to take it back to soccer because I know that, even a lot of the top teams at the moment where they're still full-time, they're only allowed to use the facilities when the men aren't using them. So their whole timetable is still restricted around the men. And not in all teams. There's a few top teams where that's not the case. But in the vast majority, it is. So when you've got, you're not, you've got no access to psychology coaches you don't have the food you don't have the facilities you don't have the same physio or recovery or or sports injury things you're training late at night you're not eating properly you're not sleeping of course you're not going to be at the same equivalent standard for men and by same equivalent standard of men i'm not pretending that men and women if they compete together would be equal i'm saying you can't do your best as a woman and achieve your potential that and these the pay of those cheerleaders was absolutely shocking disgusting. it's disgusting and i will yeah. say too so I, that is at the end I, my boyfriend watched the series with me and i felt like he would appreciate it and i'm gonna just my boyfriend and i are not nfl we're not american football fans like we don't watch yeah. at all if i'm gonna watch a show i'm gonna watch the cheerleaders because i feel like they're way more entertaining to watch than than the football players so you know he kind of like put off watching it with me because it was a football thing and i was like no no no, just watch what these girls go through with their bodies because it's a lot like what we do and i think you'll have a great, greater appreciation for what they're doing after we finished the series i sat there and i said what did you think and excuse my language he says why the f those girls paid the same as those boys yeah it's like people come so let's talk was with this particular series the Dallas Cowboys, this football team, and they go through in this docu series. I found that fascinating too. They go through the history of the Dallas Cowboys and how it turned into this huge franchise that it is. Most of that franchise power comes from the cheerleaders. It even though the football player had the football team has won a few Super Bowls and they're talented too. The cheerleaders are what made that franchise a billion dollar entity. Those cheerleaders, they have Barbies, they've had reality TV shows, they do calendars every year. They the, the cheerleaders are literally the glue that gives the Jones family who owns the franchise their billion dollar paychecks. Hmm. And that is what pissed me off the most because these cheerleaders they all work full-time jobs so i actually saw a schedule online because i don't even think the documentary got e even g g went as deep as to what they go through somebody posted their schedule online they all have to work out for an hour together in the early morning hours before work they go and work an eight-hour job 
Then they have to be back at the football, at the arena to train at like 7 p.m. They go from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. midnight, get back home like one-ish, go to bed, get up again at 6, train, go to work all day, then train all night. All the while, and then if anyone knows, I mean, you can see I'm not modeling it nicely this morning, and get your hair done and your makeup done and an outfit immaculate and, you know, yeah. things. I mean, like they probably have their outfits washed for them, I expect. But, you know, uh, it, it's it's not easy <laughs> getting it's makeup not. on quickly and getting hair to look like theirs, though. I mean, you know, if it's pouring as rain or really humid or something like that. They, um, you know, in this one episode, I'll be curious to see you watch this Catherine because towards the end it's getting towards like the first game and so they're they're training outside they have to wear their hair down which you guys know with humidity it's hot in texas mm. that's that's a problem full face makeup it is like a hundred degrees fahrenheit or something like or 96 that's like 38 celsius 100 percent humidity they're running the dance you see these girls dripping sweat but they're trying they're and you kind of see that look in their eyes where but they, they have to keep going. And so the amount of intensity that's putting on your body for potential heat stroke and the fact mm. that they've been working all day. Um, and they get what, like 15 to $20 per practice, which is that's not even a tank of gas. And then per game, they get five hundred dollars. That, that's not and then at the end of it this is what gets me Catherine. They, they interview some of the retired cheerleaders a lot of the girls once they retire have to have hip surgery yeah have to have foot surgery they the the dallas T cowboys cheerleaders are very famous for a dance called thunder what they do to thunderstruck from acdc and at the end they do a kick line and they jump up and they land on the field in a split doing that over and over and over and over again most of them have very jacked up hips and backs. And it's a lot of people say they have neck issues. So you've given five years of your life to this organization. You've helped this organization rack in billions of dollars as a business. After five years, you've made diddly squat. And now you've got to have surgery. Yeah. I just can't like. Not happy. She's, she's not, not happy. happy. She yeah. knows. Girl you know, knows. Don't you, Coco? Yeah. You know, football players also, like American football players, also struggle with a lot of body issues after they're retired as well. So do footballers, so do soccer players. I mean, there's an epidemic of ACL injuries in soccer players, and most of them have to pay for that themselves. But they, the boys are making millions a year. Mm. So if you have to recover, these girls have to recover and go find another job at the same time. Yeah. It's not fair. It is. At, I mean, my boyfriend was horrified. He was like, imagine if they actually, they want these girls to treat this like a job. Then you treat it like a job, DCC. Exactly. Then you should treat it like a job and give these girls a full pay so they don't have to have another job. They can solely focus, have them practice at decent hours because DCC does have, or they, they do have two, two separate arenas for the, the, so the I don't think yeah. the girls actually deal with having to, you rarely see them even, you rarely even see the football players in this yeah. uh, series. You know, and of course they have these these standards of living that they have to sign. They can't, you know, they have to have certain etiquette in the world. Um, they get into like stalking issues. Uh, they get they get into all the, the issues that these girls run into as cheerleaders. Yeah. Uh, they have to be they have to do community service they have to go out on the weekends and go to you know retirement homes i mean they're the pressure they are under i mean i don't listen if they had a, had us do this in our 40s i think most 40 year old women would just give them the middle finger and we'll go it is it's like we had a lot of discussion because i'm sure there'll be a lot of people thinking well sod it they chose it but the thing is people choose to be nurses too they choose to be firefighters they choose to be teachers and we all know those professions are really underpaid as well yeah. and i think what's key is equality you know, you should be, if you're a professional athlete, in, in the UK, Wales have just announced this week that they're going to pay their Welsh national football team the same as the, the men and women. And that's the first place to do it. And I'm like, why would you not? Yeah. Why would you not? And the thing is, yes, these ladies choose to do it, but that doesn't mean you abuse them and treat them like slave labour. Now, if you really care about their health and welfare 
no one can not have the impact of working those hours physically and mentally doing your j job getting up that early there's no time for proper sleep there's no time for proper nutrition there's no time for recovery and rest and recuperation there's no time for a social life so yes in one respect you're choosing it but you're not choosing having to hold down a full-time job at the same time none of the male football players are having to do that and hold down a full-time job as well and I think this is my issue is it's if you pay them the right amount they can look after themselves a lot better and not run themselves into the ground so much and then have all these repercussions to deal with later and they'll appreciate their employers more I think if they're given that yeah. respect. in the beginning episode the first episode um the owner's daughter her name is Charlotte Jones I, you know, I kind of like her, but the, she made this comment that really pissed me off. And they, she, they're, they're billionaires. I looked up Jerry Jones is like worth $14 billion. Like these people have the kind of money that is just out of this world, right? And she's being interviewed because Charlotte Jones, the daughter, who's probably out 60s now, 70s, something like that. She's talking about um, her involvement in the cheerleading. Um, she helps pick the head, the head coach, pick the girls. And they ask her about the pay. And she was like, and I'm paraphrasing what she was like, oh, they don't do it for the pay. This gives them purpose. This gives them. And I thought you, excuse my language, in my opinion, that was the bitchiest, stupidest, most ignorant comment to make. Those girls are what allow you to own your yacht. Mm. You think that you would be a little bit more appreciative of these young girls. They've given up their social life. They, they don't have time to nurture any relationship outside mm of, of th their cheerleading squad and their already established family. You know, they can't really date. Some of them have fiancés, but that means that they've already established a relationship before they got, you know, they can't really date because you can't, there's no time. You know, these girls, I, I just wanted to reach through the screen and shake her and be like, you're a woman. You're a woman. And your daddy gave you your job, which I'm totally yeah. fine with. I don't care about nepotism. I'm totally fine with that. But you can't appreciate what the, the what these girls are doing for you mm -hmm. those barbies they got barbies d designed after them and you're not and that money goes in your pocket and you're not going to actually exactly i mean you know this is a this is the whole point is most people if they see that it's this it's this people can justify things and people will always make excuses. I'm like, well, fine, do it to the football players then because yeah. they're not doing it for the thing. They're doing it. Met any professional sports person that has reached that level is not doing it for the money. There's, it doesn't matter how much money you've got in the world. You cannot put your mind and body through that day in, day out unless it's a real passion for you you cannot you just can't now the money might be a nice thing but the great thing is is when it's like a lot of people in any job you know a lot of people will make choices to really sacrifice and solve themselves for results at a better day but they're not getting that because they're leaving with literally nothing they don't even get given their uniforms when they leave no isn't that i mean it's though? literally crazy i could it not think that their uniforms are created to to fit their body, and they can't even keep them. It's it's some of the uniforms it's are madness. It's crazy, and I will say, you know, a lot of people push back with the head coach Kelly. I actually really liked the head coach, and we have to remember the head coach Kelly. She's not in charge of how much these girls get paid. That's oh. the franchise owner. She has no, and of course, she's making a good living because she's the coach. Um, but 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 that's not her. She doesn't sign their checks. She's an employee yeah. of the franchise as well. And I will say the thing about Kelly. Yes, yeah, she's a strict coach. Most coaches are for athletes. Yeah. They demand the exactly. best. But she's also very motherly towards the girls as well. And she's she's very um, – there was one episode uh, towards the end where one of the girls gets uh, grabbed inappropriately by a cameraman. And it's it's like a 19-year-old. Like, she's very young. And Kelly's in the back giving a um, like an interview for the documentary, and someone comes in and interrupts it and tells her what just happened. And you see the look on her face change, and she immediately gets up and, like, runs to the field to get this cheerleader. And the cheerleader is still in the field just – performing and she pulls her and like hugs her and brings her in and that's when the cheerleader starts crying and you know so you do see a very protectiveness yeah and of course the head cheerleader the head coach kelly and the the choreographer judy were both themselves when they were younger were both themselves 
Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders yeah. so they know what's going on. And so you do see a, you know, that was the one really positive thing is that there is a huge support system from their coaches. Yeah. Business, which I think is in incredible because obviously the franchise doesn't give a shit, you know, so at least the coaches are, are really there to, to hold them and to, to make sure that they're safe. Um, they showed uh, the original, uh, the coach before, a woman named uh, Suzanne Mitchell. And you saw her from like the, the 70s look where she's lecturing the girls like, you don't give anybody your phone number. You don't give anybody your, like, really trying to take care of these girls and make sure that they're protected. Because they are they are young. These girls are young. They're naive. Exactly. You know? And they don't understand what can happen. They don't understand that some men can just take the, the, the you know, because they're in these skimpy outfits, will grab them. You know, mm -hmm. they, they go one, uh, Kelsey, uh, she got, she had an air tag put on her car and, and followed, you know, so they go through this uh -huh. like that. And that's a part. And I'm sure even like soccer players, even though female soccer players aren't dressed in like a bikini on stage, it might be created, but I'm sure some of them get stalked as well. You have that. We get it too, Catherine, as YouTubers, we experience that too, you know? Absolutely. And I think the thing is, it's, it's again, this double standard. So again, I don't watch a lot of TV. So I'm very happy for people to correct me on this. But when you're talking about a top male sports person of whatever sport, it's very unusual that their looks are the first stage of it. Now, the cheerleaders, I do think it's par for the course because they've chosen based on their looks and they've chosen this mix of beauty pageant and sports. So that is fair enough. But the comments you see, do you know what? Even about um, people, politicians, some of which we, we might not like, but the insults that are given about a woman that people don't like, whether it's a businesswoman, whether it's a politician, whether it's a sports star, whatever, they're very looks-based. Yeah. They're very derogatory on a looks-based, but they don't do the same with the men. No. They might say they're senile or they're like this, but they don't say they look like, you know, it's very different. It's still that mindset that women deserve to be, you know, uh, we're, we're not much more than our looks. Yeah. And that's the first thing that people judge us on. And in we all words where we talk about equality, which is very different to equity, but when you talk about equality, there's still this mindset that that's in the first formats and it, it's up for grabs and it's always laughable, whatever prof profession you're in, a lot more than it is for men. Yeah, it's um, it's almost like women are still a, a society's property. Yeah. You know, like like you have and, and, and it's 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 you know, of course, the, the, the coaches are going to critique and you see them like looking at their eyebrows for the performance. But. In one episode, they go through one of the girls' Instagram pages, and it shows, like, the comments. And you're right. It's all look-based. It's not like, wow. You know, I watch this show, and I will say that's the thing about my boyfriend, too. I can acknowledge these are beautiful women, but my boyfriend can acknowledge that, too. But the first thing I thought looking at these women was I got emotional at just how talented they were as yeah. dancers. And, like, knowing how much I was, you know, the first after they go through making the squad and they have their first um, game and you see them, the rookies are standing with the vets to go out. I mean, I get emotional talking about it now. And they start playing the cue music and you see the look on their faces. And I got emotional watching because I was so happy for these girls that they had worked so hard. And I get emotional. And as a woman, like, how... To, to be able to 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 have earned that spot uh, for just hard work and and to have that taken away because some asshole is going to critique your boobs how your boobs you know instead of appreciating the precision with the way they can bring their leg up the the they're seeing their strong stomachs not as something beautiful but how strong their core is and how precise they are in their moves and appreciating that talent because god knows i could not do that i don't want to do that like to be out there and to do that like i don't want to do that but i can appreciate that and i will say like the last this isn't really giving anything away guys but the last episode the last shot of the of this series I got emotional watching that too because it showed it was a montage of the girls that they followed and they were in the, the dressing room of the locker room of DCC and they're looking into the camera like the camera's a mirror and you see them with their, their uniform on and their full face of makeup, their fake eyelashes and you start to see this montage of them pulling off their eyelashes, taking off their makeup 
And the last shot is Kelsey, who is retiring after the game, is her looking into the mirror. I'm going to see emotional without any makeup on and just smiling at the camera because it shows you the girl behind, the real woman behind the character she plays. Really, because mm. they're playing a, a character when they're and out they there. Are. And this is where I think, yeah, I do think they are choosing to play a character. It's like if you're a dancer, you yeah. are a performer. Former, and I suppose all sports stars of some sorts are performers, but a lot of sports are not based on looks at all. Yeah. So, you know, you're not going to be not picked for a, a cycling team or an athletics team or a football team if you're not pretty. So they're choosing to go into that sport. So that I think the difference is, I'm not expressing this very well, the difference is on the pay side of things. It's like you know, we we I don't think there's anyone here that doesn't think nurses, teachers, um, ambulance drivers, firemen should be paid more because of what they do. I think when you take advantage of someone's love for something, if there's no money there to pay them, that's different. But when you're literally seeing this huge disparity between the male sports stars that are on the pitch and the women that are doing that, it is absolutely disgusting. And that to me is just taking such advantage and it's putting them in real danger because when you're having to hold down a full-time job and do all that, you cannot look after your mind or your body properly. It's impossible. I'm hoping if anything, like I don't expect, I want to make this very clear, and I think we're kind of the same with this, Catherine. I don't expect Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders to change the way they coach or the expectations they have for the girls. That's the sport. That's the job. Yes. Right? That's the job. We all know it. What I hope happens, though, out of this is that those girls get paid their worth. That there's an equal yeah. exchange of energy and that it makes their their time worth it. I mean, there's they talk about the girls in the sense that the girls, the cheerleaders, that's what draws kids to the performance. These little girls come to the football games dressed up as Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Yeah. They see the girls coming out with their pom-poms and they'll like touch the hand of a little girl, and the girl gets so excited because it, it's like Santa Claus just touched them, you know, and it's a you know, and it's it's that and so it, they, these girls are carrying this legacy with them. And they're doing the, the franchise proud. They're they're carrying that. Fr they're respecting the franchise. So can the can the franchise respect them in return? You know, Absolutely. that's what needs to be fixed. If you want these girls to continue to make you money, then you got to give them their fair share. And they do love the sport. And they are obviously all very seem to be very nice girls. That would be very kind yeah. of anyway, even if they weren't. You know, but the fact that they go above and beyond to represent this franchise because that's what it is guys it's not even really about just the football it's a franchise yeah and it's the biggest it's the biggest arena i actually can't wait for you to watch it to see the arena catherine because it's uh, yeah arena. i'm looking forward to watching it yeah yeah it's, you know and it's like damn you're worth 14 billion you can lose some of that money to these girls who are who made it easily. easily easily and that's what I think, you know, because then it's a real choice and you can take it all into board. And also it just means that when you retire after a really short career in it, you've got something to fall back on to look after yourself properly. And I think the complex thing is, is in, in this world, we can all, um, you know, there's been quite a lot of controversy this week about um, someone being seen abusing a, dress a dressage rider who's been kicked out of the Olympics for a court abusing a horse on camera and it goes on all the time and the thing is if we want to move forward you know everyone talks about a new world they're very happy to criticize all these people doing things they don't like but we have to change the way that we do things and just because it's mm -hmm. always been done like that before it doesn't um mean that you know they have to keep doing it now and the thing is times have changed we need these people to be recognized in the way they should and have these different conversations and this this argument that oh they choose to yes they choose to have their body image discussed they do if they go into a job like that but they don't choose to not be able to look after their body properly in the process and to do that they've got to not be working another full-time job and they've got to be able to have the time to take the care and recuperation and recovery their body needs absolutely respect the cheerleaders man like you know if for all the men out there watching this that might think oh this is silly they're just jumping around on this on the field i dare you to learn that that le learn thunderstruck learn yeah. the things they do and see how you fare doing it and then dance for three hours straight afterwards yeah. How you fair.
have some respect for what these girls do. They're entertaining you. They want to entertain you. They're performers. They want to perform. They want you to feel excited. They want to bring happiness and joy into your life. That's what a performer wants to do. It's a, it's a service to others career to perform for others because you're doing it to make people happy, to make people smile. And that energy needs to be reciprocated from our respect for them, all athletes, all female athletes, our respect, even if you're going to watch a, a woman's soccer team play, the, the, you're being entertained by watching the game, have respect for what they do on that field for you. And the yeah. guys should pay them what they're worth. They should pay them what they're worth. And that's and, and just really truly appreciate the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And oh. this thing, we talk about the divine feminine and the divine masculine. And this to me is an occasion where it's been demonstrated really clearly. But you need both to have a healthy society. So they should be both appreciated in their differences, what they bring to it, but equally valued. Oh, my God, Catherine, you, that, I can't wait for you to watch this because there's actually they actually use their hips. And then and they, they do a whole breakdown of that, like how to use the, the female body in order to perform. I can't wait. Speaking of divine feminine, I cannot wait for you to watch that now because you're absolutely correct. This is that let's celebrate the divine feminine, the, the, the strength these gold has with the femininity combined. Yeah, they're combined. Amazing. So it's amazing. And so if there's any Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders watching this, <laughs> we'd love to have you come on the show. <laughs> so um, I have reached out to some of them. I don't know if they got my messages, but <laughs> yeah. oh, I think it's just such an important discussion. I can't wait to have more for all sorts of sports people, men and women. Yeah. And what do you think? You know, because I think it's just like for me, it's all about credit where credit's due. And let's not just because something's always been done by that, you know, doesn't mean you have to keep doing it so yeah. great discussion i'm going to be watching it over the weekend and let us know in the comments below please let us know what do you think respectful comments respectful yeah. comments oh, and yeah. destructive comments yeah i'm gonna challenge if you guys haven't seen it yet go watch american sweethearts especially if you're not from the united states it'll give you a better understanding of how important this franchise is to our to the, to the americans and yeah we're gonna do multiple conversations i want we want to talk to jamie Soleil, our friend who was a gold medalist um athlete herself figure skater she probably has a lot to say about this i know kelly kelly teal our friend who survived nexium um she might have a lot to say about this as far as like the mentality of not paying them versus paying them and is that a how does the cult aspect come into this so guys yeah we're gonna keep talking about this watch the documentary the docuseries if you haven't so that you can give your full understanding of what these girls are going for and if you have watched it i want to know who your favorite who was the cheerleader that really like spoke to you? Like I loved Victoria. I want to be Victoria's friend. And I loved Kelsey. I loved both those girls for different reasons. I thought Victoria, if you're hearing this girl, you were so vulnerable and you really went deep on the, all of your mental stuff going on. Fair play to you. And I think you turned into America's best friend. I think so many people do. You're gorgeous. You're a beautiful dancer. And so, um, Tell me who your favorite was. What what was the what, which cheerleader was the which dancer as they call themselves was the one that touched you the most, whose story really resonated with you the most. So, well, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Love it. Absolutely love it. We'll talk to you guys next week on Catherine's channel next week, guys. All her links are in the description box below if you're new here. All right, we'll see Thanks you later. So much. Bye everybody. Bye.